Interesting, I, I mean, I guess it, it, it goes back to when I grew up in Scotland and, and living in Glasgow and seeing the impact that housing has on people's lives. It's, it's very obvious when you see uh, huge housing estates with poor quality housing and the impact that has on a, at a social level. And uh, when I came to Vancouver, I, I guess I brought that with me. And uh, I'm interested in, I'm very clear that the huge connection between housing and the quality of people's lives. Uh, so what I'm interested in doing is, is trying to impact that and uh, in a way that creates community and has an improvement in people's quality of life. So you are a developer? Yep. And, uh, you're a builder? What sort of scale and uh, size of projects do you build? My, uh, my background on the development side is I've been doing small scale uh, multi-unit residential projects in the city of Vancouver primarily. Uh, and we also act as consultants to, uh, with other developers doing larger projects. But in my own role as a developer, I've been doing small scale uh, four and six unit type developments. My take on it is multi-layered. So you're talking about everything from how do you house the homeless to how do you give people access to housing that they can afford. So that's the kind of range. And that's, that's a, so where we've typically focused is in building housing, market housing, i.e. for sale, um, that is, uh, that fosters community and is built in a more sustainable way. That's, that's been our focus. Where I really want to go is how can we create uh, a new model for truly affordable housing not affordability that is created simply by reducing the size of a home, which is how affordability has been created in the market, but truly affordable housing. So people who are in that gap, I can't afford even the 5% down, but I know I'm, but I'm paying income, a good chunk of my income every month for housing that I live in. How can I put that to better use? I guess is 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 one is the big issue around affordability. Just as I'm thinking, that there's really for me there's two issues. One is like how do we how do we create community, right? And it's it's so overused it's scary. Like that community is like oh yeah we all talk about creating. When we did it, we did our latest project in Strathcona. Like, the reason I wanted to do that is because I walked into Strathcona and I got that sense of community, like I've never sensed in any other area of Vancouver. And that's like, literally, people sitting on their front porches, they're looking, they're, they're, they're interacting with the community. You walk down the street, people stop you and they talk to you and they go to the local union market. Like, that is community. And like, how can you we create that in all of our projects? And it's and it it can be addressed at, at a design level. Like, how do we how do we create that like inside outside space? How do we provide people get that balance between privacy and interaction with the community? And and it can be done from a design perspective. We did it in our last project at Coos, like it's very so much... Tell, tell us about the Coos uh, corner project. That's right. Uh, tell us about the project. I, I mean, as I say, I, I was at, we, the whole Coos project started from going down into Strathcona and, say, and getting a sense of like, wow, what an amazing community Strathcona is. And going, okay, and then this, a property became available. And we started working with it and saying, Okay, how can we how can we take this property and rather than just do a typical approach of knock this garage building down and build a bunch of townhouses, it's like how can we use what's there, take really what was a landmark property on a corner in Strathcona um, and and preserve it and also provide housing that really 
was innovative but also worked with the existing community. So that's, that was our intent right from the start. What we ended up doing was providing six ground level townhomes uh, used, an exist, used the existing garage building to create two loft townhouses and then added four new homes. And when I look at that project, like I, I love it. And it's not just from a design perspective, but the community that that project has in and of itself, like it literally is like neighbors calling neighbors, drop in for beer, literally a cup of sugar, please. And that happens and that's a little microcosm for Strathcona. And I would love to see that happening in other areas of Vancouver. Because if people are living in housing like that, they get what community is about and they get that it's not just about them. They don't just close the door, stay in their own little house and run their life accordingly. They get that they're part of a bigger picture. And if we can, if we can create spaces that, so that people get that they're part of a bigger picture, that's when we're going to start having a major impact like from a social perspective. In terms of some of the environmental values that inform your design and maybe specifically mm. to that project, um, what is your sense, uh, what, what are some, could you maybe describe some of the natural values that mm. go into your designs? Mm. Well, what we try and do in our projects from a sustainability perspective is make it really simple. Like, like, people get very confused and, and kind of intimidated by green or sustainable. It's really simple. Like, we focus on where's the low hanging fruit. You can put in a dual flush toilet and a low flow shower head and faucet restrictors for like $100 a home and reduce your water consumption by 50%. That to me makes sense. Why isn't everyone doing that? So we, we focus on water efficiency, we focus on how can we reduce energy but in really simple ways, not going the high tech route, but really simple ways. And then personally, why I started in the whole green building arena was I got to see how we were using or misusing our resources, our natural resources. I, I would walk through the old growth forest of Clackwood Sound and go, hang on, I'm cutting down that tree to make that building. And that wasn't okay. Right, so how can we make better use of the resources that we have? That's how we do it. First off, e each home at Coos has a door straight onto the street. All six homes have a door straight onto Hawks Avenue. Over and above that, I think one of the biggest wins in, at Coos, like the, one of the best design things that we did in that whole project was the three porches that we put at the second floor level uh, in the row townhouses. Um, Coos, or Strathcona had a, a porch project years ago where the federal government put money into, the, into having people bring back the porches to the street. We really wanted to try and create porches wherever we could in Strathcona and the way the design worked we couldn't do it at ground level but we put it at a second floor level on the townhomes and those are used all year round, they're covered and people get to sit there watch the world go by and interact with people on the street and that's crucial right? and if you look back at how housing is developed in Vancouver the the porch is an integral part of that. Like how do you, and that's the inside outside space thing I was talking about. It's like how do you get the balance between private outdoor space and interaction with the street and with the community. And that's when people start getting, okay, this is my home and I've got my privacy and I want my own space, but I'm part of the community. It, it's absolutely critical. I mean, if we could do one thing in Vancouver, if we could put porches on all of our homes that really relate to the street and people feel comfortable sitting in them, not like token porches, but actually porches that people use, 
and sit on and relate to each other and relate to the street, we'd be way ahead. <laughs> um, so, so you mentioned flat roofs. Uh, g green roofs are, are, you know, a lot of people are talking about them. Um, if you go up into any high-rise building in Vancouver and look down, there are like flat roofs everywhere on existing buildings. Never mind building new buildings, existing buildings. We do not use our roofs in Vancouver. And I'm not talking about necessarily putting a whole bunch of planting up there. I'm talking about using them as amenity spaces for the people that live in those buildings. Like, So you don't have a yard, you don't have outdoor space, but you've got thousands of square feet of flat roofs up there doing nothing. I'm talking about using that for barbecues, I'm talking about using that for outdoor space, for growing things, for solar hot water panels. Like, it's like prime opportunity to use for, you know, a way to reduce energy in your building. I mean, uh, uh, the point about um, using flat roofs or growing things on, you are going to come up against the issue of leaky condos, leaking of buildings. That has to be addressed, and it has to be done in a responsible way, like, the leaky condo issue is a massive, massive issue, and it's not. It hasn't gone away. Like we're we're still going to see that happening. There's ways to do green roofs and and utilising flat roofs in new buildings and existing buildings that could be done in a totally responsible way that will not impact the integrity of the building. And you have to, like existing buildings. Work with what you have. There's ways to deal with it and do it in a responsible way. Um, Vancouver has an amazing stock of existing buildings, which I just think, let, let's look at those rather than, uh, so often we look at what can we build new, what can we, let's look for sites and build a high rise or build something more dense. Like, Let's work with what we've already got, work with our existing neighborhoods, our existing streets, our existing buildings, and make more efficient use of that, right? So looking at the apartment building stock that we have, how can we take, in a lot of cases, very well-built buildings and make better use of them? How can we use their roofs? How can we use the parking areas that they have? How can we take those existing buildings and maybe use them as a vehicle for affordable housing? So take some of those buildings and people that are paying monthly rents, turn that into home ownership, right? And and but not take it out of the use it as a, I'm not being very clear, but use it as a as a way to give people a step up into that home ownership market. Like give it, give them an opportunity and and bottom line, you use what we have already and use it more efficiently and more creatively, whether it's existing buildings, it, their flat roofs, their parking areas, the existing suites. Um, somebody once thought about turning an apartment building inside out, doing away with these stupid corridors that we have, putting the, adding walkways on the outside of the buildings and using that inside space as additional living space and then putting your outdoor space on the top of the building. Like it, it you know, we look. If you were actually to stand back and look at a three or four story walk up apartment building, you go, what a stupid way to use that space. Like, it's so much of it is underutilized. Let's look at that. 